Hello and welcome back to Read Becca. Today I want to talk about a promising debut novel from a Trinidadian author, and that is When We Were Birds by Ayana Lloyd Onwo. This one sounded so much up my alley that I requested an advanced copy from the publisher via NetGalley, and uh, obviously for honest review, and I really enjoyed it, so I want to share it with you. Uh, this novel is all about two characters in alternating perspectives. First we've got Darwin, who is Rastafarian, so he's not able to interact with, with anything to do with death, but he's desperate for work and the only job available is a grave digger. Now he obviously has to forsake his faith and doing so means his mother cuts him off out of her life and so he has to kind of move forward and, and completely change his identity and life in order to take this job. But not long after he takes the job, he realizes it's not as simple as just grave digging. There aren't any paranormal elements to his part of this, but th there is a secret plot. So we also have Yajide is the other character, and she is also dealing with some loss, but that loss is the death of her mother. And it's strange because she starts reminiscing about these kind of memories of her mother's life and that vivid reminiscing turns into actually talking to her mother. Uh, so she has inherited some connection with the dead through her mother's family line. And we see that play out very interesting ways. Um, as I said, she is able to communicate with her dead mother, but her mother's relationship with her is very contentious. So they have kind of a strained relationship, I would say. And that means interesting things for, for this conversation here. So one day while Darwin's at work, Yajide appears, but she's not actually there. So that kind of creates an instant connection between the two of them when she does actually show up at the graveyard in order to negotiate her mother's burial. I would say that this really benefited from sinking some time into sitting down with it because it is written entirely in Trinidadian English, I believe, um, which is a dialect. Uh, it kind of drops the possessiveness and tenses of words, uh, as well as some of the character dialogue being in much stronger accents and written more phonetically, some sort of patois, I would guess. But the writing is so beautiful and when you really do immerse into it, it's a wonderful experience. There is a moment in this, the scene where Darwin and Yajide have driven up somewhere high and are looking down on the city. And as they're looking down, Darwin is reflecting on the fact that from within, the cemetery seems so vast, but from up above looking down, um, he sees that the cemetery is really a small part of the city. There are parks and other living spaces that are so much broader. And for me, this is, this is really, um, a reflection of the balance between life and death and how death really takes up a much smaller place in the world um, compared to all of these living spaces that we have. So I found that conversation really beautiful. And the scene was just so cinematic and vivid the way it played out. I, I really loved it. Even in its simplicity and, and mundanity, really. There was nothing action or, or excitement happening. They were just purely reflecting in this beautiful quiet moment. I also found it really brilliant the way that it showed these mother relationships because we have Darwin whose mother is still living, she's still around, but he's completely out of her life and completely disconnected from her, has no communication whatsoever. Meanwhile, Yajide's mother is, is dead, <laughs> but she's still talking to her. And even though they're talking, they're still contentious. They've, they've maintained the dynamic that they had in life and that's, that's so intriguing. So I think typical of magical realism, there's not a lot going on here plot-wise. It's very slow paced and mundane, but I think it has a lot to say. So there's no real hook in, but by about the halfway point, I had kind of some indications of direction. And in the last 10%, I was completely immersed into it. I was really, really absorbed. So it was a page turner. So just know going in, you need to expect some slow pacing for sure. So while I was reading, I really wanted more introspection from the characters. We don't ever get a sense of grief from either character. Uh, from Yajide, her, her mother's died, but her mother's still around, so that has stunted her grief to some degree, but she doesn't really explore that at all. And Darwin doesn't grieve for either his mother cutting him off 
or his faith. He, he doesn't seem to really care. It seems like maybe his mother raised him in this faith and he didn't ever actually have strong connection to it. Um, but he had to, for instance, shave his head for that because he could not no longer um, be a Rastafarian and have these, these dreadlocks that he had grown from childhood. And so he, he has a symbolic and literal transformation as a result of this choice, but he, he doesn't ever really think about it. I also really wanted more introspection about their relationship. So they connect very quickly, and for me it was, it was too fast, but they don't ever really have any serious conversations. They don't, have, they don't talk about emotions with each other. They don't really talk about wanting to be together. They just sort of assume <laughs> that they are going to be together. Um, so, so that was, that didn't ring true to me. Um, so I really wanted more there as well. So for me, this was a really impressive debut and an author I plan to watch for sure in the future. Uh, I think a couple things held me back, mainly that I just wanted more from the characters and the plotting. So that is my thoughts on When We Were Birds by Ayanna Lloyd Bonwell. Thanks so much for watching.